Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, and this channel is where I share with you my works in progress, finished projects, things I'm cooking up, books I'm reading, funny things my kids may say. My hope is that as you watch this episode and the previous episodes that you find some inspiration along the way. I'm coming to you from a beautiful sunny spring day in Minnesota where I live with my husband and our two young children. This is episode 124. for joining me today in this creative space. It has been quite some time since I've had an opportunity to sit down and do the whole chit chat of everything. I believe the last time I was able to find a little chunk of time to be able to go through all my projects and things like that was probably the middle of February or early February. I think it was the middle of February. It was around Valentine's Day. And so things have just been really busy around here. All good things. We've had travel. No, not all good things. We've had illnesses. Those were not fun. Uh, the kids were taking turns basically being home from school and that just kind of throws a, throws a wrench into things, so to speak. But yes, things are in the upswing. The weather is looking beautiful. Things are greening up. Hopefully I will have inserted some footage of the beautiful spring blooms and things that are coming up in our garden. We have a lot of perennials and it is so exciting to see them come up every year. Some of them have been very well established over many, many years and other ones are a little bit newer so you never know if they're going to survive the winter. Though we had a really mild winter, I think most things will probably come back up. There are some plants that really like the cold winters, like peonies, and so I just wasn't sure how they would fare <laughs> this year, but they are coming up and we'll see what happens. If you are new here, the way I organize my videos is I usually have like a vlog section in the beginning, which just captures some things over um, whenever, <laughs> since whenever we were here last, but since it has been so long, I will not recap from snowy days through <laughs> springtime. It'll be a little more recent. And then we go into an intro welcome section. I usually just give you a little bit of an update on how things are going. Usually we'll talk about gardening things when it is gardening season. I'll talk about the weather because I'm from Minnesota and people in Minnesota like to talk about the weather. And yeah, so then we go into finished projects and then works in progress and eats and reads section where I talk about maybe some recipes I've tried recently. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have any to really share this time, but because uh, I j didn't jot anything down and I cook and bake pretty much every day. Um, and some of the books that I've been reading, again, since it has been so long since I've done a book update, I've read a ton of books in the last six, eight weeks, and so I won't go through all of them, but maybe some of the more recent ones. And then there's sometimes a food for thought section where there's something that has been maybe weighing on my heart or something that I've been thinking about that can be related to making, because because for me, making is part of my everyday life, but sometimes it has a little more to do with just like general life stuff, and sometimes I'll have something to share there, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I run out of steam by the end of the episode because it gets so long, and I just, I just don't have the <laughs> energy or capacity to talk anymore. So we'll see what happens when we get to that point. There may or may not be that section, but. So that's kind of the general setup format of how I run these episodes. And just so you know, I do include closed captioning. So you'd click on that CC button. If the speed that I talk at is faster or slower than your preferences, YouTube also allows you to adjust the speed. And I do include show notes in the description box below this video. Sometimes you have to click on an arrow that says show more, and there will be links to the designers, makers, stores, and things like that that I do mention on the episode. I use Ravelry for all of my projects and keep them pretty detailed, so all of the notes will be there as well. But I do try to include that information here on YouTube just as another way of learning and to keep that information accessible. First thing I want to mention is thank you so much for all those who participated in my very first make-along. It's the very first one I've hosted, and it was the Make It Again make-along that 
encouraged you to make something that you've made before. Either you want to make it the exact same way or maybe change something up. Maybe you wanted to change the yarn, maybe you want to change the size, maybe you wanted to add stripes, whatever you wanted to do. And because it was a make-along, included knitting, crocheting, sewing, really anything like that. And so many of you participated. I ran it on Instagram, that way people could share their photos and there was a hashtag along with it. I will share the hashtag here on the screen in case you want to click on it and see what people have made. It has since ended. I started it January 1st and it ran through March 31st and I drew several prizes that people had generously donated. All the winners have contacted me and received their prize and that was just so exciting to do. So maybe I'll run it again next year. I don't know. We'll see what the interest is. I'm always making things again and again throughout the year and so that just gave me a chance to host a party, if you will, for everybody to make along together. Before we get going into all of my finished projects that I wanted to share with you today, I will just briefly touch on what I'm wearing. This is the Sonder by the Petite Knitter, and I knit this in 2022, so it has been two years, and I knit in April, May, and I used Pearl Soho's Linen Quill. I did modify that from the pattern. I believe the pattern is written for DK weight, but the gauge is pretty tight, and so I thought it was a fingering weight gauge. I can't remember if it was 24 stitches to four inches, but uh, it might have been. <laughs> the color ways that I used are lavender opal and peachy pink for the contrast color. So you've got this like really light gray that has a hint of lavender to it, and then this peachy pink that is really more of like a neon melon color, I think, but I really like the contrast of the neutral with the neon here, and I love the fit of it. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer so maybe you can see the color work better. This yarn is a fine Highland wool alpaca linen blend, and I feel like it's the perfect lightweight blend for spring. And yeah, I just really enjoy wearing it. I think I did modify it quite a bit. I had, let's see here, let me just look at it real quick. Yeah, it says it's for DK weight, 24 stitches for four inches on US four needles. I find that to be a little tight. Usually 24 stitches is what I use for fingering weight sweaters, and so that's what I did here. But to each their own, you may be a tighter or looser knitter and um, find the yarn and the needle match that works best for you. <music> I've finished several sweaters since we last talked. A lot of them were test knits and I did create featured finished project videos for those and I will link them below or put them in one of the cards here on the top of the screen. And those would be the Woodhaven Pullover by Tiff Nealon, the Skyline Tea by Tori Yu, and the Springline Tea by Samantha Guerin. Although that one is not out yet. That one is releasing May 1st and so that featured finished project will come out when the pattern releases. The third or fourth, the other sweater that I had finished back in March was the Northwoods V by Jessie Made Designs and I also have a video for that. And they were just such fun projects to make and they're so colorful and I enjoy all of them so much. So check those out if you are interested in hearing more about them. Some of them have like a little bonus content in there on color combinations and figuring out like a color palette. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, then definitely check those videos out. I think the finished projects I would like to share with you today actually are all socks. And I am so excited about them. So let's get started. The first pair of socks I'm going to share with you today are a pair of DK weight socks that I knit using yarn remaining from another pair of socks. So here they are. They are tweed, they are marled, they have a faded gradient. They're so lovely. These are going into the gift bin. If you are new here, I keep a gift bin throughout the year. And so when it gets to Christmas or birthdays, I have stuff ready to go. Usually they are made with a recipient in mind. That way I make it to the correct size. And when I'm done, I will uh, either tie it together or just put a safety pin on it with a uh, tag that says who it's to and things like that. And so these are going in there. And the yarns I used are a Knitter's Homestead 2-ply 8515 Superwash Merino and Donegal Tweed. So that is the tweed yarn. I don't know if I have the yarn still here. Oh, I do. 
That one was a new hank of yarn. So I do still have plenty left over for another pair of socks. So it's this beautiful lavender color with tweed that is brown and black. Hopefully it is showing up here. And then I held that together with yarn I had remaining from a previous sock project. Oh good, I do have it. And it's a Zabra Ball Crazy, and that's a 75-25 wool and nylon. So that's also a fingering weight yarn. So I have about 15 grams left of this one, and the other one I have, I think, about 54 grams remaining. Hopefully this is showing up here. So I really enjoyed how these knit up. For the cuffs, I just held the tweed double. And then for the rest, I held one of each yarn. I did not follow a specific pattern. If you are new to sock knitting, there are tons of patterns out there, paid for and free. I cast on 40 stitches using a US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needle. And I did an old Norwegian cast on, so it's nice and stretchy on top. I did 15 rounds of a Knit 2 Pearl 2 rib. And then I joined the other yarn. So I cut one of the tweed yarns and then joined the other one. For the leg, I knit 30 rounds. And then I did a slip stitch heel flap and turn to get off the blocker. So maybe I can show you that a little bit better. So that is a nice reinforced heel with the slip stitches. It's very nice and sturdy. And then I knit the gusset and then the foot. I think the foot I did about 44 rounds after the gusset. And so these should fit a US eight or seven and a half or eight women's shoe size. And that um, should be perfect for the recipient. So I used 50 grams of the tweed and 36 grams of the marled zubber ball yarn. And there's more of the tweed used because I held it double for the cuffs. Next pair of socks I'd like to share with you are a pair of shorties. Let me find my info here. And these are for me, both of these Yarns in these socks have been used in the multiple other projects. Well, the self-striping was just using one other pair of socks, but the solid color I used another one. So here they are. I love how these turned out. I have an eight inch foot circumference and I wear a US seven women's shoe. And sorry, my notebook was running away there. And I cast on 60 stitches and I did it cuff down, and I did one by one, knit one purl, one ribbing for 15 rounds, and then I did 10 rounds of stockinette for the leg. I did a shadow wrap short row heel, and then I cut this solid yarn and then joined my self-striping yarn and just knit until those ran out. So I had 26 grams of the self-striping yarn, so 13 for each. I did run out a little bit in this navy section, so I had joined another miscellaneous navy that I had that matched as close as I could. And then I finished that off before going back to the solid color for the toes. The yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners 4 Ply in the colorway, I think black currant something. That's this pinky purple color. And that's a fingering weight yarn. That's a 75-25 wool nylon, superwash wool nylon. And then the self-striping yarn is Woolens and Nosh Targi Sock in the colorway Meadow Sprite. And that's 411 yards for 100 grams, 90% superwash Targi, 10% nylon. The stripes weren't all the same width. So they had this color sequence where it had like more color blocking and then like skinnier stripes. And the way I had my yarn wound, one was going in one direction and then the color sequence was going in the other direction for the other one. And they just came out super fun. So again, I just used up all the self-striping yarn that I had left. Self-striping yarn, especially by Indie Dyers, is a higher price point and I find a lot of satisfaction to be able to use it completely up. 
And I feel like self-striping yarn isn't something that I can as easily use maybe in like a sweater or something for contrast color and like a color work yoke but I can definitely use it in socks or hats or mitts and this is a really great way for me to use it in short socks because I still get the excitement of the stripes and I get the excitement of being able to use it down to the last inch and I can pair it with like a solid or speckled or variegated yarn and still make it work really well. So I love these and I used about 18 grams of the solid color. So if your shoe size is similar to mine, you could use like a mini skein for the other parts. And then um, I had 26 grams of the self-striping. So that just kind of gives you an idea. If, you're ha if you have smaller feet or bigger feet or a different gauge than mine, obviously it's going to vary, but it just gives you a little bit of a starting point in case you want to do something similar. The third pair of socks I would like to share with you are a pair I recently finished for my husband. I am knitting him a bunch of socks this year. So I was calling it Operation or Hu Operation Husband Sock Drawer or something like that. I don't remember. But the goal is to knit 12 pairs for him this year and that should double the amount of hand knit socks that he has from me. He does wear them all the time. He is extremely knit worthy and I am just looking forward to knitting him a whole bunch of socks. <laughs> and so this is his fourth pair of the year and here they are. I love how these turned out. I cast on 64 stitches for him. He wears a US 10 men's shoe foot circumference, nine and a half inches, and he prefers his socks more snug than not. And so I use a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. This is the Regia 4 ply, uh, colorway is 4767. It is self-striping. It's got a watercolor effect, which I love. I did not start them in the same striping sequence, mostly because I couldn't really tell when I was winding the yarn because it's so modeled, I guess. And so I think it's fine. And I did not follow a specific pattern. I cast on 64 stitches and I did a knit to purl two for 24 rounds, which is about two inches for the cuff. Then I did stockinette for 60 rounds. And then I did a slip stitch heel flap and turn. And then I have the gusset. And then for the foot, I knit, I think 60 rounds after the gusset. So that was about eight inches from the back of the heel. And then I did a wedge toe. So I alternated decrease rounds with knit rounds until I got to 12 and 12 on the top and bottom. And then I grafted those together. So I like to knit my socks in tandem. So on their own needles. And I like to use the Chowgu um, nine inch circulars. So I do that all the way until I get to this heel flap. And if I'm doing a heel flap, I will switch it to double pointed needles because I just like the feel of it that way. So I'll keep the insep stitches on the nine inch circular and then I'll use double pointed needles to knit this heel flap and turn. And then for the gusset, I switch back to the nine inch circulars. I just find it more comfortable on my hands that way. And then when I switch to the toes, I switch to magic loop because it's just easy to split up the instep stitches with the bottom. And yes, I realize it's a little bit silly to use three types of needles for one pair of socks, but I have the needles and it just works for me. So that's what I do. <laughs> but I'm so pleased with these socks. I think they turned out so nicely. I used 81 grams total. And with the yarn remaining, I could probably use it for like I don't know, heels, toes, and cuffs on like a solid pair of socks? That could look cool. But yeah, this is what yarn I have remaining. It is, I think, 17, 17 and a half grams. But yeah, in the little ball form, it's really hard to tell what the patterning is going to look like. But I really like the subtle striping of how it has knit up. Oh, I do have the ball band here. So the ball bands of these yarns do show you what the patterning is going to look like on the sock, which I think is really nice. Otherwise, sometimes it's really hard to tell. I really like this yarn because it holds up really well. It is a great one for gift knitting because it is machine washable. I do wash all of our socks in the washing machine on the wool cycle on cold, 
and I do a fast spin dry at the end and then I hang them all up to dry. So I don't put ours in the dryer, but I do machine wash them and I haven't had any issues with that. And since I knit socks for our whole family, I'll usually collect all of the wool socks in one big bin and then do that load all at once. One more thing before we move on to works in progress is I forgot to mention that those socks that I knit, I knit them as part of Denise of Earth Tones Girl Current um, Make Along. It is the I Love Books and Sock Knitting 24? 2024? I think it's just 24. I'll put the hashtag here on the screen. And I believe it runs through May 1st, but she had posted in her Instagram stories something about potentially extending it because people were having so much fun. So I don't know. You'll have to keep tabs on it through Denise's Instagram or her YouTube channel if she announces something there. But I had so much fun coordinating my sock knitting with the books that I was reading either by cover or by the title of the book and the yarn or the content, things like that. So it is something that is right up my alley and something that I have done in years past just for fun, but it was really fun to do that along with other people. So again, hashtag should hopefully be here on the screen should that be something you wanted to check out. And I just had so much fun knitting along with everybody else. I hopefully will also put some pictures of my coordinating uh, socks in progress with the books that I was reading at the time here on the screen. If it is not here, maybe I will mention it in the books section when I talk about the books that I had been reading, but it'll either be here or either be there. <laughs> so let's move on to my works in progress. I have a big pile of works in progress here next to me. Let's see, what should we start with? They're not going to be in any particular order. We'll just start off the pile. So the first thing we are going to start with is one that I, I think I've had this on the needles for a couple of weeks, but this is through the Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad subscription. It is a monthly yarn club, and this year they are based on um, a certain, I can't, the artist is escaping me right now, Jessica, Jessica something. I will have it here on the screen. Maybe I'll have a picture of the uh, journal, the knitting journal or calendar thing that it came with. I, I am at a loss for words. Project journal, project journal calendar thing that it came with. It is absolutely beautiful. They're earthy colors and nature inspired and just absolutely beautiful. So the yarn in here is April. And the project that I am knitting is a Ripple Camisole by Jessie May Designs. This is my fourth one. I believe there are a lot of things in here that are like my fourth one, possibly. Um, I did make some modifications. So it's based off of the Ripple Bralette pattern that she has. And I don't have the Ripple Camisole pattern, but they are very similar. So they're both knit in the same ribbing pattern. The gauge is the same. And then the sizing is a little different because it is tighter for the bralette than it is for the camisole, but both have negative ease. And the yarn that I'm using, I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see it hopefully. It is a beautiful soft peachy pink with some very micro speckles of orange and I think it's black or really dark brown. This yarn is uh, the Bighorn Sock Base, which is a 75% 19.5 micron uh, superwash merino and 25% nylon at 463 yards for 100 grams. And it's a light fingering weight yarn that is super, super soft. I wear my socks pretty hard. So generally I don't like super, super soft <laughs> yarns for my socks because I feel like they'll pill easily, they'll wear holes in them, and it's just not what I prefer. But I really do like this very soft yarn for under layers. So I have used it to knit a mini mock neck tank by Jessie Made Designs, and here I am knitting the camisole. So it looks teeny tiny because it is ribbing and it's going to block out pretty big. I have it on 16 inch circulars, and so it is kind of hard to stretch out to show you what it will look like, but it will block out pretty big. The Pearl uh, Progress Keeper I have on here is by Yura of Knit Boop Studio. And so is my beginning of round marker, which has a star on it with gold flecks. And yeah, so this is knit bottom up. And 
It is something that's easy to pick up and put down because it's just this rib pattern. I have knit several of these so I know the length that I like and I tend to knit it a lot longer than what it suggests in the pattern because I like it to be able to be tucked into jeans and I do wear it as an underlayer so I usually have a linen shirt over it in the warmer months or a flannel shirt over it in the cooler months and I really really like this very versatile underlayer pattern and I did go down a needle size because uh, the yarn is so fine. So the pattern suggests a US 4 needle, but I went down to a US 3 needle and then went up a size so that I should end up with the size that I want. And again, it is a pattern with negative ease. And so I picked a size that would give me no ease at my natural waist, which means I will have negative ease at my full bust circumference as well as my hips, but it won't be tight just around my natural waist. So that's how I decided to pick a size. That is not how it says to pick a size in the pattern. It just is what works for me and I've made it several times and I enjoy that fit. The next project I would like to share with you is one that you saw a sneak peek of in the video where I shared about Amy Schur's Make Along. And this is my fourth coloring book tee. It is a pattern by Amy Schur. And I am using a yarn that they are now carrying in their online shop. So this is where I'm at. This is a stitch marker here that is also available in Amy's shop. Hopefully you can see it. It is a beautiful teacup. It keeps flipping around. Maybe if I hold it this way, then it won't flip. And the yarn that I'm using is a new to me yarn. It's by Wool Dreamers. It's sauna. It comes in 50 gram donuts. So it is pre-wound. It is a 50-50 wool cotton fiber blend and it's a very soft yarn. I would say it's very dry so it does catch on itself. I've noticed that when I'm knitting with it, it will catch with the row below and so it doesn't really go as quick or as smooth and the yarn is beautifully heathered. This colorway is Fratelli and it's like a light blue with gray and a little purple in it. So I feel like it's got like a chambray feel, which I feel is really nice for spring and summer. And this is what the pattern, or the yarn looks like knit up. So it is knit top down. And I really like how the fabric is working up. The pattern does have you just cast on right away without doing the neck band, but since I've also made this several times, I know how I want mine to fit. And so I did start with the neck band and then went into the rest of the pattern. I don't think I have much else to say about this right now, but I am enjoying it. It is a raglan style, but it's compound raglan, so the rate of increasing isn't the same throughout, which gives it a nice S-shape curve in the raglan section, and then you don't have a ton of like extra fabric under the arms, and it's just a very nice fit. So I'm excited to keep working on this. I would love to have this done by the end of May. I believe that's when the knit along goes to. And I will have the hashtag here on the screen if that is something you would like to check out. For more details on the knit along, you can feel free to check out my video here on YouTube, but definitely check out Amy's Instagram if you want to find out all the details. I did forget to mention that this is a fingering weight yarn and I am using US4 needles to knit this and that is a 3.5 millimeter needle and that is what I used on my other coloring book tees as well. I like the fabric that I get using fingering weight yarn on those size needles and I feel like it is still airy, not super dense, but not so gauzy that it's see-through. So that is I think generally my preferred needle size, although recently I knit one on US 3s and that one's really nice too, but the US 4s definitely go a little bit faster than a US 3 on a fingering weight tee. Uh, the contrast color I'm going to use for my stripes is called Ozetta, and this colorway is like a cream with a very light gray heathering to it. I feel like this color plus, there's like another one, I think it begins with an S, they look very similar, but I think one is more brown, the other one is a little more brown, and then this one's a little more gray. I don't have the other one on hand to be able to show you the difference, but I believe the other one is a little more um, 
leaning towards on the brown side and this one leans a little more on the gray side, but they are both beautiful neutrals. So this is my contrast color for the stripes in the body. And then this is my mane. I am going to keep going with the Amy Sure Makes patterns. This is one I've had on the needle since January, I believe. And I think I got stuck on a certain section, put it away in timeout, and then fixed whatever I well, not fixed it, I didn't have to fix anything, but figured it out. Uh, thank you to some emails that I sent to Amy saying, help me, I don't understand what I'm not understanding. But it, some of the things with like V-necks have working things at the same time and my brain just has a hard time with that sometimes. And so I was just, I just couldn't figure it out. But it was fine once my brain clicked with it and it, yeah, it worked. So this is a V-neck cardigan and I, really like a v-neck cardigan. I find them super wearable and I don't have to worry about like, well not worry, but I don't have to uh, have like flappy things on the top. I feel like with some crew neck cardigans, what happens on the top is if I don't want to button it up all the way, there ends up being this like funny flappy thing on the top and sometimes it bothers me and sometimes it doesn't, but with a v-neck, it can sit really nicely on the front and then nothing is flapping around. <laughs> so, the yarn that I am using for this is Pearl Soho Hedgerow. And this is a DK weight yarn. It is not super wash. It comes in 243 yards or 100 grams. The colorway I am using is Fuchsia Rose. It is 93% merino, 3.5% cashmere, 3.5% mulberry silk. I will be honest, I cannot tell that there is cashmere in it. It is not a super soft yarn. It is very dry, very toothy. If you lose all your stitches off your needles, nothing will drop. Everything stays put. So I think this would be an excellent yarn if you were going to be knitting color work. I have so far used it three times, or this is my third time, and I have used it on mostly plain stockinette. I, actually, they're all part of this building blocks collection that Amy has. And I just love the rainbow tweed in this one. Not all the colorways have rainbow tweed. They're usually like black, brown, cream type of tweed, I think. But this one, and then a brown one. I think, is the brown one called cattail something? I can't remember. But the brown one, I think, also has a uh, rainbow tweed, the dark brown. But I just love how the colors are. I really like how the tweed is embedded in the yarn. I'm pretty picky about tweed. I don't like it when I can pick the tweed off, because I will. But this one has the tweed like embedded in the yarn more, and so once it's blocked, everything smooths out beautifully. I can actually show you that because I've had the body blocked, and I'm just working on the sleeves now. I like to block the body ahead of time if I can, if nothing is on live stitches anymore. That way it just smooths out the edges for picking up stitches much easier. And then I also have a better idea of the size of it and if I wanna make any adjustments. So this is where I'm at. This is the back. This is the front. So I have one sleeve done and my lightning bulb, not lightning bulb, my light bulb <laughs> stitch markers on the bottom mark the different rate of decreasing that I did. I did deviate from the pattern slightly on the sleeves because I wanted to make sure there was a little more positive ease. The pattern is written for it to be like a more boxy body and a slimmer sleeve, but I, uh, I just wanted a little more room in the sleeve. It's not a ton, but I did pick up for more stitches in the sleeve. I did, I think I'm knitting the size A for the body section, but I picked up for the size D in the sleeves. And then I follow the rate of decreases for that size D sleeve. And then I can't remember if I knit it a little bit longer, but anyway, there is the first sleeve and I'm currently working on the second sleeve. So I'm maybe about halfway, halfway through this, no, two thirds of the way through the second sleeve maybe. And then I will have the button band to knit. Let's see. I don't know if I'll be able to try this on without getting too tangled, but I might. Let's see. I might regret this. <laughs> I don't know, because I'll have two sweaters on. It's going to be a little bit warm, but I do want to show it to you. 
And it, the fit will be definitely different when there's not a sweater underneath and when there is a button band knit. Oh dear, this is a little tight here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna try to stand up a little bit so you can see maybe the length a little better. I wanted it to go past my hips, but not super, super long. So here's the top of my hips. It goes a few inches past that. And then this front area will pull in differently once I have that button band knit and then it won't be falling off my shoulders since I won't have a tiny circumference needle on that part restricting my arm movement. <laughs> but yes, I'm super excited about this. I would love to have this done by the end of April. I feel like this is something that I am going to reach for all the time. I love a good cardigan. I would love to knit more cardigans. I find that over time I have minded less I don't mind as much knitting flat. Uh, I feel like in the beginning I really didn't love knitting flat or just maybe maybe the purling part, but I don't really mind it so much now. I don't I don't know what changed. I didn't change the way I knit, but maybe it's the thought process. Oh dear, I have darn I'm sitting on it. I think I think I just don't mind the process of it as much and my mindset is different. I think that's what it is. And yeah, I don't mind it. There are other cardigans that can be knit in the round and then you create a steak in the middle and then you cut that steak open. And that I think would be really fun. There's a color work cardigan I have in mind that could be fun to do, but I need to finish this one first and then see where I'm at with that. CC of Stitch Wish Craft is hosting a make along for cardigans for this year, 2024. I'll put the hashtag here on the screen so you can see what that is if you choose to participate. Works in progress are allowed, and yeah, it's it's a make-along to make more cardigans. I have two more works in progress to share with you. This one is a really special one, and it is with yarn that I've had for quite some time. Well, one of the yarns I've had for several years. It is a hand-dyed yarn by my friend Shoba of Serendipitous Wool, and I bought it several years ago, it is the colorway Speckled Peony, and it is so beautiful. It is a non-superwash fingering weight yarn that is 100% Highland wool. And it comes in 459 yards for 100 grams. It is a very vibrant wash of pink and orange with some speckles of green. It is very bouncy and very round and just so pretty. And so I had bought 200 grams of this several years ago and I recently in um, a spring cleaning sale by Pearl Soho decided I really wanted to try out their mohair silk. So this is the tussock base and it is a higher price point and so I bought it during their spring cleaning sale. I don't remember if it was 30% off or 40% off. This is the Anjou Pear colorway. It is a pink terracotta leaning red and I just thought it would pair perfectly with this yarn. So Amy of La Bienne May is hosting a Lento Love Knit Along. And the Lento is a pattern that is a raglan style sweater with a folded neckband, and it is knit with a fingering weight yarn and a mohair. And I decided I was finally going to make it. A viewer here on this channel kindly gifted me the pattern. Thank you so much much and so I have cast on and I am so excited to show you what the fabric looks like. Are you ready? Here we go. So I have knit the neckband and I am in the raglan shaping section of this top down sweater. Here is a tulip progress keeper by Yura of Knit Boop Studio. And then my beginning of round marker is by Reshma of Hello Lavender. It has a flower on it and it says I Matter. And that one's made out of polymer clay. 
And yeah, this fabric is delightful. The speckles still come through. I feel like the color match is just perfect. It blends in really, really nicely while still letting some of the speckles shine through. It still, you can still see some of the fuchsia and the green, and I'm hoping it's showing up. And then the halo is just beautiful. I love how this is working up. It is knit on US 10, which are six millimeter needles, which is really nice after knitting so many fingering weight things that are on really, really small needles at a really, really small gauge. So it's nice to knit up something that works up a little bit faster. This is the yarn uh, in cake form. So you've got this lovely fuzzy mohair silk and then this beautiful hand dyed uh, variegated yarn with some speckling. And they just pair so nicely together. I, I love it. I don't knit a lot with mohair held with another yarn because it can be pretty price prohibitive. But this was a yarn, again, I purchased on sale and I really wanted to try it. It is so soft and fuzzy and lovely. And the yarn that I bought from Shoba was just so special that I needed to find something lovely to go with it. The last work in progress I would like to share with you today are the fifth pair of socks that I'm knitting for my husband. And I have them housed in a bag by Tanny Casey. And I just love this bag. Tanny is such a talented sewist. This bag I treasure. There is a sparkly vinyl front. And then this floral fabric is the perfect match. The yarn that I am using is by one of my favorite self-striping yarn dyers, and that is Chantal of Mud Punch. Chantal had a sale recently celebrating the anniversary of her yarn dyeing business, and I had to jump on it. I think I do it every year during the anniversary of her shop. This colorway is called Tainted Glove. It is a self-striping yarn that is 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon. I find her yarn to be on the plumper side, which I really like. And it comes in 385 yards for 110 grams. The yarn caked up looks like this. If I have a picture of it prior to winding, I will share that also on the screen so you can see what it looks like. But this is what the yarn looks like caked up. I really, really like these colors together. There's like a teal, a light pink, a reddish brown, a chartreuse color, and like a cream, and a navy. And for the contrast color, I am using contrast color this time, I don't always, but because I want to squeeze out two pairs of socks out of this yarn, I am using a contrast color. And the one I'm using is by Knit Picks, and it's their Hawthorne Fingering, which has a similar yardage per 100 grams. It is an 80-20 superwash fine highland wool 20% polyamide, which is like nylon. And at 357 yards for 100 grams, this colorway is Serpent Kettle Dye. And it is this semi-solid blue-toned green that I think pairs perfectly with the self-striping yarn. The Knit Picks Hawthorne is one of my favorite yarns. It is super wash, which means it's great for gift knitting. It is also at a friendly price point. I believe at retail it's $14 US for 100 grams, and it often goes on sale. And sometimes it's $11, and sometimes I think it's been even under $10 for 100 grams. But I really like these colors, and they have a lot of options. There are speckled ones, highly variegated, and some semi-solid ones like this. So I have started the socks. And I have just finished two cuffs. So here are the two cute little cuffs on my nine inch circulars. Because this yarn is a little heavier, I would say it's a light sport weight, heavy fingering weight. I am using US one and a half needles, which is a 1.5 millimeter. And I have done a knit two, purl two ribbing for 20 rounds each. 
and I have just joined my self striping yarn. I'm just going to knit vanilla socks so they will be stuck in it. So the way I like to knit my socks two at a time is I will just be like kind of catching up with each other. So I might do like a couple stripes here and a couple stripes here and just keep going. And so I will probably do the heel in the contrast color as well, just to save some yardage on the self striping yarn. That way I leave myself plenty to knit a pair of socks as well. So I am so excited about these and I am reading a book while I am knitting on these socks. When I'm reading, I can knit, but only if it's like round and round stockinette and no counting. I can't count and read at the same time. And so I will share the book that I'm reading in this next section of Eats and Reads. <laughs> Okay, that is it for all the projects. We are on to the Eats and Reads section. I don't think I'm going to talk much about the Eats stuff because I didn't jot anything down. I don't believe I tried any new to me recipes. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have much to talk about there. <laughs> Recently, I did make some chocolate chip cookies. We had dinner at my brother's. He made pizza. It was amazing. And I think I do still have the pictures of that on my phone. I'll have them on the screen here if I do have them. But I do have lots of books to share with you. So as I mentioned earlier, Denise of Earth Tones Girl has been hosting this sock knitting reading make along and it can be audiobooks, it can be ebooks, it can be physical books and however way you decide or enjoy reading and I think reading can be uh, reading can cover a lot of different methods or different ways of reading different ways of enjoying literature so I personally really enjoy a book book a physical book because that is time that I don't have to be on a screen that is time that I don't have to have notifications other things pop up and my eyes do get really tired if I stare at a screen for too long and also I really like the smell of a book. I like flipping open a book. I like feeling those pages and I like going back if I, you know, thought of something like, oh, that must have been a clue. I might have missed it. Kind of going back and looking at stuff like that. And some books also have like a family tree if that's relevant or a map. And I like referring back to that. Some of them have sections where they define certain words because at least for a lot of the fantasy books that I read, some of the words may not be as familiar. Some of them may be made up words. Some of them may be combination words from different old languages or things like that. And so just having that to reference is really handy. And I find that much easier to do in a book book. And so I will put a picture of the cover of the book that I'm talking about on the screen as I am talking about it. I find it as a nice visual reference and also I I don't I don't judge a book by its cover, but I am definitely drawn to books differently depending on the cover. So maybe I do judge a book by its cover. <laughs> but the covers of all of these books that I'm going to talk about are so beautiful that they definitely need some time here up on the screen. The first two books I want to talk to you about are I think in a trilogy it is The Prison Healer and I have to say I feel like kind of mixed about this one. So this is young adult fantasy, uh, magic, fantasy romance. It uh, The first book was published in 2021 and it is based off of this 17 year old who is fighting for her survival in this like high security notorious death prison and there is a mystery to solve. She ends up with these trials that she has to go through and then the magic kind of unfolds. It is a bit dark. I feel like while reading it, it's kind of devoid of color. It is very gray, kind of dismal. There is some funny humor and banter in it. There are heartwarming moments, but there are definitely parts of it that are pretty hard to read and I feel like, well, emotionally hard to read not words. I do feel like if you have certain subjects that you're more sensitive to, definitely look up the trigger warnings so that you can see if this is a read that is going to be okay for you to enjoy. Or maybe, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but 
something that you might want to read. And so I did read the first one. I kind of, I kind of skimmed the second one. I don't know why, but I did. And the first one ended, well, no, I can't say anything. Otherwise it'll mess things up. I have to say that it just pulled at my heartstrings a little more than I wanted to at the time. And it was a little more intense than I could handle maybe in the second book. And so, yeah, and maybe that's a sign of a good book because I was emotionally invested in these fictional characters that I just was like, oh, no. <laughs> so Prison Healer and I read book one and two and his book three out. I know it's a series. I am looking here to see what it says. Yeah, I would say it is young adult, but I would say older young adult. The main character is 17, and I think some of the other characters are a little bit older than that. Uh, book two is The Gilded Cage, and book three is The Blood Trader. So yes, it is a trilogy with the books being published in 2021 through 2022. The next book I wanna share with you is one that takes a little bit of a different turn. I needed something a little more uplifting, a little warmer, a little bit more of like a, I don't know if this would be classified as cozy mystery, but it is historical fiction, it is fantasy, and it's adult, not young adult. This is book two, Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. Gorgeous cover, and this one is just, I just love it. I read the first one, I can't remember if I talked about it here, on the channel, I think I think I might have, um, but I, I just love it. There are these mysterious realms, and this is based, isn't it based in the 1800s? I can't remember exactly right now, but there is this professor, Emily Wilde, who doesn't really have like great social skills, but she's extremely intelligent and is kind of a no-nonsense person, but there is her fellow scholar and former rival, Wendell Bambleby, and he, he is just such a character. And I just love their banter, and I love learning more about them and how they interact. And I'm trying to say a lot of things without giving things away because I feel like it's really difficult to mention anything <laughs> really about a book without worrying about giving it away. But I have to say, I loved it. There is a third book coming out and I don't know when it's being published, but I really look forward to the third one. So if you're looking for something that is a little more lighthearted, still has some darkness <laughs> to it, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed this one. So maybe that is something you want to give a try. This second book was just published in January, 2024. It is not super long, it is 342 pages and I very much enjoyed it. The next book I want to share with you is The Queen's Rising. I believe this is a duology. It is by Rebecca Ross, who I have read multiple other duologies from her before. This one was published in 2018, so I don't know if it was her debut novel, but uh, it was published earlier than the other ones that I read. This one is classified as young adult fantasy. There is magic, it's high fantasy. The main character in this one is a 17-year-old who goes to this special school to discover or foster her passion. And there's these different categories and then there's these different teachers that help these women master their passion. And it's in like music, art, drama, music, painting, drama. I can't remember the other ones. There's like knowledge and other things. Let's just say there's a war brewing and we go through different trials of loyalty, friendships, and found family. I enjoyed the world building, I enjoyed the character development, and I got this from the library, and the library didn't have book two, even though it's been published, and so I put in a request for book two, and we'll see when it gets here. But I generally get all of my books from the library, unless I think I'm going to read it again, then I will purchase the book. But in general, I do get all of my books from the library. The book that I am currently reading is another duology. This one is Woven in Moonlight. And this one is young adult fiction, fantasy, romance, historical fiction. This one was published in 2020. There is portrayal of indigenous Bolivian culture and its people versus like descendants from the colonizers of Bolivia. Colonization is a theme within the novel and it does talk about the prejudices that some of the characters have 
towards indigenous people. And it goes through some self-discovery and friendships and trust and betrayals and loyalties. The way the magic is written in is really fun and as somebody who is into the fiber arts, there's definitely a lot for the fiber lovers in this book. There is talk about weaving and wool and creating with your hands and taking pride in that and really feeling that need for that creative energy to be released into making something amazing with our hands. So I thought that was pretty cool. There is a second book that I requested from the library and I look forward to picking that up. This book is not super, super long. It's 384 pages and I am enjoying the read. That is it for the Eats and Reads section. And I don't think I really have anything in food for thought today. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if I don't write things down, I tend to not remember, but I am really excited about everything coming up in the garden and things greening up. It just feels so nice. And even though we had a really mild winter, just things changing from gray and brown into bright greens and pinks and purples, it just, it really does brighten up your mood to see all those colors everywhere and to see, I feel like it's like old friends coming up when the perennials come back. And I'm like, oh, hello, it's so good to see you again. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited for that. Now things will get busier in the garden because as things come up, we have to clean things out and put new things in. We do plant some annuals like our vegetable garden. Most of those are annuals, except for the chives and the green onions. Those always come back and they are pretty frost hardy. So they just kind of take over and do their own thing. So that's pretty exciting, but we do have annuals that we like to put in as well. So that I think is everything that I have for you today. I hope you are doing well, taking good care of yourselves, your loved ones, and your neighbors. Cheers to being creative and I will talk to you next time. Bye.